Well, a warm welcome to the Uxbridge FM History Show, and it's a great pleasure to welcome back Ken Pierce, as usual. Now, Ken Pierce just told me that he's been chairman of the Uxbridge Local History Society for 53 years, which is quite something. So here we are, Ken. First story today, early years of Uxbridge Library, when you're ready. Yes. Um, we had part one last month, so I'm moving the story on to part two today. I'd reached the stage where the Uxbridge County Library was situated in a house at the western end of the High Street. And um, so in 1923, the library was, from then on, was based there. Five years later, though, it was said that the library had progressed, but was ridiculously small and still staffed by unpaid volunteers. Two significant developments took place in 1929. Firstly, it was decided to move the library to a site in Cowley Road. The Salvation Army now occupy that, that plot of land. But a school there on, the, on that land had closed and the building was available and larger than the building the library was in at the time. There were three rooms that could be used. Secondly, it was decided to appoint a lady librarian at a salary of £100 a year. This was the first time anybody in connection with the library had been paid. It had all been volunteers until that time, and it was still volunteers uh, to a great extent, because the new librarian appointed, Joan Humphreys, still remembered by many in the town, by the way, it, uh, was um, opened by J.L. Garvin, the editor of the Observer newspaper, on the 8th of January 1930. Three rooms, the main library, a reading room, and a children's library. It was open from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day except Sunday. Miss Humphreys was helped by about 40 volunteers. The rooms were heated by coal fires. There was a collection of reference book too, and two glass-fronted showcases for museum exhibits. Soon there were organized special displays of books, WEA courses, public lectures, and Miss Humphrey's favorite because she conducted it, a Thursday story hour for children, and it proved immensely popular. Strong support came from the Uxbridge Libraries Committee, which was chaired by H.T. Hampson, who was editor of the local Gazette. A remarkable man, because he was editor from 1906 to 1946. Forty years as editor. He retired at the age of 78 but he had an immense and profound knowledge uh, as a result of local history. A paid and qualified library assistant was soon appointed to help run the daily routine in Cowley Road. In the mid-1930s, Middlesex County Council decided to erect a large building where the Civic Centre is today. And this was intended to house all their different departments, including a library. Some sections were ready by 1939. On 6th of July 1940, the Cowley Road building was closed. And on the 9th of July, the new library opened in the, in the new building. War conditions meant that there was no opening ceremony. The library in this new home was on the first floor over a health clinic and was a truly beautiful and spacious building. 
Apart from the main library area, there was a reading room, a children's library, and a museum room. The latter was soon named the Hampson Museum, after this long-serving editor of the local paper. The library proved immensely popular. Of course, it was wartime. On Saturdays, there was often a queue outside, waiting to get in. Reading in wartime was a major pastime. And, of course, the local population was swollen by men and women serving locally in the armed forces. Our rear Foxbridge was close at hand. But Mrs Humphreys and, and her helpers made every effort to make it a centre for education and culture. She organised special displays, art exhibitions, gramophone record concerts, a brains trust for gardeners, and one local family actually gave puppet shows for children in the new library. So, it was flourishing. In 1957, much later when the Oak Farm Library opened, the chairman of the Middlesex Education Committee said, we at the Guild Hall look upon Uxbridge as the pioneers in the library work of the county, the first district to establish a library committee, the first district to permit themselves to be specially rated to allow for adequate accommodation. And so they afforded the county council experience to guide them in other parts of the county. Well, I've brought the uh, story up to the um, period of the Second World War. And of course, the story of Uxbridge Library goes on. And another page is being written at the moment. But uh, anyway, for the time being, uh, that's the early history of Uxbridge Library. And I may possibly follow that with more later. Thank you. Fantastic, Ken. Another good talk. Thank you very much. Now, stay with us. We've got more to come.